Well, we're going to begin the show in Venezuela where we find people taking bags full of nearly worthless cash to the shops as inflation goes wild. Now, that's been going on for months, but the new problem is that as of a few hours ago, Venezuelans are not allowed to withdraw more than 10,000 bolivars a day. Now, that's just the equivalent of $5. The country's economy, which depends heavily on oil, has been crippled by low crude prices for many months. Juan Carlos Lamas has more from Caracas. This has become a common sight in Venezuela's public and private banks. After shortages of food, medicine and other basic staples, there is now a shortage of cash in circulation, making the lives of Venezuelans even more challenging. I feel imprisoned and suffocated. I'm not a millionaire who can take thousands of bolivars out of the bank. I want to feel free to use the money I have whenever I want, but I just can't. I have many problems at the university. I'm always late to class because I have to spend hours queuing to get cash. It's not fair. In recent months, inflation has forced many Venezuelans to carry around bags full of money for basic transactions. And now banks are running out of cash, leaving people without enough money to pay for goods and services. In response, President Maduro's government is printing currency in larger denominations. But experts say this is not the answer. It will solve the transactional situation. I mean, the people will need less bill in order to pay for a coffee, less bill in order to pay for a but well, it will not solve the principal problem that is behind that, that is inflation. According to the International Monetary Fund, Venezuela is expected to close 2016 with around 700 percent inflation. Inflation that has even forced street vendors to give up on cash and opt for credit cards instead. Most people don't have cash, first, because it's not safe, and second, because food prices are way too high. It's so much cash to carry around by yourself that we decided to use credit cards in order to help our customers. The Venezuelan economy relies heavily on oil, and the government is hoping a rise in oil prices following OPEC's decision to cut production will help alleviate the country's crisis. President Nicolás Maduro has even introduced a new law stating that all foreigners who visit the country must pay in dollars and not in bolivars. But despite all these measures taken by Maduro's government, it's unclear how much time Venezuela has before it completely runs out of cash. Juan Carlos Lamas, Tier 2 World. Caracas. Well, we're joined by Carlos de Souza now. He is in London. He's a Latin American economist at Oxford Econom Econ Economics. Uh, Carlos, thank you very much for joining us on Money Talks. Just want to ask you about the first point uh, the scarcity of banknotes in Venezuela. What do you put that down to? And what can be done about it? Hi, Matthew. Thank you for inviting me, first of all. Uh, the main problem with the Venezuelan currency is that the highest denominated currency is 100 bolivars, which is at the moment around 2 cents. So when this banknote was introduced in 2008, it was worth almost $50. And now, because the value of the bolivar has fallen so much and so rapidly in the last few months, it is now down to 2 cents, which means that for the government it has become increasingly costly to print more and more and more uh, banknote, bolivares banknotes. Okay. Uh, and the government has refused until now to increase the denomination of the banknotes. In a few months, we will have new banknotes up to 20,000 believers. This will help alleviate the problem of scarcity of banknotes, but it will only be a temporary solution as inflation is so high and increasingly high. In, I, I will say in one year from now, we'll be in the same place we're in, uh, right now. Carlos, that is, new that is the fundamental problem, is the inflation then. Uh, what would you advise the government to do to bring inflation down? Yeah, that is correct. So the main problem with inflation is that we have a central bank that is not independent. The Venezuelan central bank is basically a financing agent for the government. The government is running a very large uh, uh, budget deficit, uh, which we estimate is around 10% of GDP at the moment. There are no official figures for the whole public sector, so we cannot know with certainty. But there's a very large uh, public sector deficit, which is financed with money printing, so to say. 
So um, the central bank is lending mon money to the national oil company, which is the one that is running the largest deficit. And this is increasing the money supply exponentially, and this is causing inflation. So for the government to lower inflation, the first thing is that they have to change the citizens' expectations, because the citizens have gotten used to have higher and higher inflation every single month. And the government is not doing anything to change that. So first of all, they have to present a credible plan, a credible economic, economic plan that reforms the entire economy. They have to make it public. They have to make it simple. And they have to convince the people that it is worth holding believers again. At the and moment, people are trying to get rid of their believers, the believers they earn as fast as they can. Because if they take too long, then the value of their earning is just diluted. Now, if we see oil prices going up, and keep going up after the decision by OPEC to limit or cut the limit on oil production, will that significantly help Venezuela? It will help a little bit, but not very significantly. Not to the extent that the Venezuelans will have an improved quality of life, uh, quality of life that have this deteriorated so much in the last three or four years. I'm saying it will not be enough because the source of this crisis is not the low oil prices. The Venezuelan recession started in 2014, actually in the first quarter of 2014, when oil prices were still above 100 per barrel. So low oil prices is not the cause. It's just making matters much worse because the government has way less financial resources than it had before. But if you see any oil producing country in the world, none of them is facing such a crisis as Venezuela. The source of a crisis is economic mismanagement and an economic model that simply doesn't right. work. Uh, thank you for that. Carlos de Souza clears up a few things for us. Appreciate it.